Well, let's, let's start off. Thank you so much, Sarah, for having us in your house and for taking the time to sit down with us and to talk about your dad. I really appreciate you. It's my pleasure. <laughs> I love to talk about my dad. So just to start, tell us a little bit about your dad and, and his acting career and how that unfolded. I know it's a long story, but um, <laughs> but it, I, I, I guess with, let, let's start with his, with his seminal role as, as Frankenstein's monster. Well, Frankenstein was my father's 81st film. Mm -hmm. And as he always said, no one saw the first 80. <laughs> that role made a pivotal difference in his life both personally and professionally. And it made him a star overnight mm. after 20 years in the business. Mm -hmm. he, um, he had been in Canada, British Columbia actually, uh, doing repertory theater for 10 years. And then he'd been in Hollywood for 10 years, but nobody knew it but him. Mm. And the, the role for the monster in Frankenstein would have gone to Lon Chaney Sr had he not uh, unfortunately died at an early age. And then the role was offered to Bela Lugosi, who turned it down because it was a non-speaking part and because it had too much heavy makeup on it. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so my father was in the commissary on that Universal, and James Hoyle was in the commissary at the same time and invited my father over to have coffee with him at his table and said, Mr. Karloff, you have an interesting face mm -hmm. and I'd like you to test for um, a role in my upcoming, um, excuse her, <laughs> uh, she owns a house. <laughs> um, um, he wanted my father to test for a role in his upcoming film, Frankenstein. And my father had been a starving actor. He would have done anything. Mm. And uh, he was delighted at the opportunity to be in a James Whale film. Mm -hmm. And um, he spent two weeks testing uh, the makeup with Jack Pierce, trying one thing or another. And Jack, as my father said for years mm -hmm. to come, was an absolute genius mm -hmm. in makeup. And they came up with the makeup that was used. And they tested it. And the rest was cinema history. Mm. Certainly made a difference in all of our lives. Yeah. Well, I think my father understood, and he said that kids understood it also. They were not afraid of the monster. That Frank, uh, that the monster uh, was um, the victim and not mm. the perpetrator. And um, I think his performance elicited sympathy mm. from the audience rather than fear. Mm. And I think that interpret his interpretation of the role uh, is what made, um, made him the unexpected star of the film. Mm. Of course, Colin Clive gave a brilliant performance, but and he, of course, had been the anticipated star of the film, mm -hmm. um, Dr. Frankenstein. But uh, my father turned out to be the star of the film as the creature, but he wasn't even invited to the premiere, mm. which uh, is amazing in today's terms. But um, I think the empathetic way in which he uh, portrayed that role is, is what gave it as a particular, uh, made it more tasteful uh, to the audience. And um, I think that's what made it different. If somebody else had played it, it simply would have been different than my father played it. But I think uh, the audiences um, sympathized with the creature and um, it went down in cinema history as one of the iconic films. Mm. Well, my dad had certainly paid his dues. He'd been in repertory theater, sometimes getting paid, sometimes not, um, digging ditches, um, building sets, driving trucks, loading uh, bags of cement, trying to sustain himself. 
um, and in Hollywood, when he got to Hollywood, he was an extra for many years, third from the left in the fourth row, um, at minimum, minimum wage. Um, uh, when he did um, finally get the role as Frankenstein's creature, um, the treatment he received was, at that time, actors were really treated as pieces of meat mm. by the studios, uh, unless you were a star, which my father was not at that point. And um, by the time he finished making Frankenstein, he was acutely aware of uh, the need for a vehicle for actors to have to speak out um, for better treatment, better hours, better pay, um, because he had been treated rather roughly by the director, James Whale, and um, he felt it was, he and 14 other founding members of the Screen Actors Guild felt very strongly that it was important that actors have a way, up and coming actors who did not yet have a voice in the business, that they have a voice, have a vehicle by which they could protect themselves, have some rights and, and a way to, to protect themselves and form a union. And that, that is the, what SAG is today and was their purpose in forming the Screen Actors Guild. My dad's card number was number nine. Mm -hmm. um, he, he was very pleased to be connected with the f forming of it, but he never spoke about it. He was a very modest man, mm -hmm. but he served on the board of directors for many, many years, well into, uh, SAG was founded in 1933, and then he um, served on the board well into the late 40s. Mm. He did, my father was a very kind man, mm. and um, a very reasonable man, mm. a very modest man. He was very well educated, very articulate, uh, very modest. He did not lead the, lead the life of a movie star. Um, he was very appreciative of his fan base. Um, he had a lovely, gentle British sense of humor, often turned back on himself. Mm -hmm. uh, he was very self-effacing, um, but he was very well educated and very well read. Mm. Um, so he, with all of that, came some wisdom. And um, he was just a, a gentle human being, um, despite the roles he played. <laughs> yeah. He was the antithesis of the roles he played. Yeah. And um, people who worked with him uh, respected him and liked him, and he was a consummate professional, and people who knew him personally just adored him. Mm. So was he typecast? Yes, but, um, and did he mind it? No, he was often asked that question, and he said, oh my heavens, no, it's a lucky actor who is mm. typecast. Mm. Kept him working right up until the day he died. Mm. So he was a grateful, grateful, actor, um, he said, I'm the luckiest man on, on this earth for being able to do something I dearly love and then be jolly well paid for it. <laughs> That's wonderful. Now, what, what was his favorite film or the one he was most proud of?